Paul, fabulous announcer. Hey, how are you? Hi, so tell me a little bit about how your experience here has been. Louder. Yeah, well, this is the best week I have all year, no question. The amount of support that we get, the size of the crowds, the energy, the athletes that you get to meet, meeting people like you. Like, honestly, this is as good as it gets. It seems to me like at the end of the day, I have trouble falling asleep because there's so much that you're thinking about through the day and the cool people you met. Like, last night I got to have dinner with uh, Amgen Stuart Arbuckle and Andrew Messick from AEG and Kristen Pachochin. And, like, you're sitting there looking around, you're like, these are the people that I read their quotes all year on, you know, talking about the sport and where it's going and to be able to just interact with them like that. It's awesome. And that's just one facet of why this is so cool. Well, that's cool. Actually, I was following uh, your Facebook and seeing that you were having dinner with these really cool people and I thought that was awesome. And for me, it's been really great too because I hear you and I'm saying I've heard you at Data Point and I like, yeah, but cool. I mean, yeah, we appreciate having people like you getting into the sport. And, you know, and Dana Point was a good example of like what they did with that Cox cable and getting that race. A lot of people saw it, uh -huh. and I think you know, the Amgen Tour California is the platinum standard. But races like that are raising their game because yeah. of what they're seeing. And I, you know, I think you can see in the next couple of years more and more. You know, where you are down in SoCal, that's a real strong race. Right now. Tell me a little bit about um, how you got into this. How you got into <laughs> I grew up in Boulder, Colorado, uh -huh. and so uh, my uh, my folks got divorced, and my mom uh, lived really close to Mike Lazner, who was the director of the Coors Classic, and so really had some amazing opportunities to connect to the sport, like 14, 15 years old, just as a goal for with teams, and then that was back in the air, if you watch those old DVDs, where the Soviet Union team uh, was dominant, and they came over and raced against Le Mans in 81, and I was there, like, you know, I spoke a little bit of Russian, I taken some at school, uh, and so I, it was really amazing to be around. High school? Yeah, it was odd. Fairview High School in Boulder, Colorado had a, a teacher who had the ability to do it, uh -huh. so they offered it two periods a day. I even took it in junior high, like long story, but I had, I knew, I had a 50 word vocabulary that was 50 words more than anyone else at that time, <laughs> you know? So, uh, and that really, they, they needed, the kid, American kid knew his way around town, knew the training routes around, so I was like, let's, and so then that just kind of parlayed into being a mechanic and a racer and ultimately uh, maybe uh, 2002, 2003, uh, Saturn Cycling Classic, uh, yeah. I had an opportunity, really amazing opportunity. Thanks Briggs, that's our uh, system Briggs is giving me our start list, yep. Hey, hey that, was, that, was, that was Briggs Heaney who just walked in. Hey Briggs! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yep, Briggs has been a huge, huge help from what he's just making sure I have. He actually, he actually helped Bicycle.net two, two years ago. Did he? Yeah. Oh. yeah good man. And yeah. he's an announcer himself, so you'll hear more from him. But, uh, yeah, so ultimately, uh, it's this, you, you need that, like uh, Eminem says, that one jump. You know, you get that one moment, and mine was that, that Saturn Cycling Classic, Chris Weary won, and he's a really, really good friend, and his father had passed away that week, you know, and the ride was one of those, the most inspirational day of racing I'll ever see. I don't expect right. it to top, be topped, I should say. And that's fine by me, you know, that's cool. It was amazing it, to start your career. And it was one of those kind of, Jeff, the guy I worked with, he was the announcer, and he had a problem uh, getting to the finish. They needed a stand-in announcer for a while. And then all the time when Jeff got there, I got to keep working with him. Wow. It was really, okay, yeah, that's the rest like of history. A whisper, a whisper yeah. of a change that changed parts of your life. Kind of, it's uh, right. <laughs> Start and finish? Yeah, um, and I do the sign-in stage, the Herbalife sign-in stage, ah. which is really a cool part of the day. Like, I get lucky. I get to do the call-up, I get to do sign-in stage, and I call the finish of the race. Okay. Those are really like some of the key right. moments. And then, you know, there's a lot of PA tag reading and that kind of stuff. And yeah. Jeff and I really share that work. And then he does all of the award ceremonies and, and a, the ceremonial stuff. And then we really share the play-by-play. -play, so, yeah. how, do you, how do you think of enough stuff to fill the dead air? <laughs> You know, it's weird. I never have a problem. I mean, there's a lot, like, so easy in a lot of ways. These guys, the, it, like, you know, today you've got Paul Mock. This is his hometown. He uh, goes to school here, getting his PhD. He's in the California Tourism Travel, King of the Mountain, Jersey. Yep. That right there could fill half an hour of show. You know, we only have 40 minutes. So yeah, there, there's never a shortage of, like, that's part of the being around the sport. And you're going to see, you know, the more you get to know people, the more you know the backstory, the more you get to know Hank Bogles, they'll tell you that kind of thing. Yeah. You learn uh, 
about what interests people out there because it's not just like he was 18th at the Tour de Picardy in 2007. Right. It's sometimes there's other things that they connect to yeah. out there. And so it's not raw result data. It's that you know human beings connect to stories, whether it's an underdog story, whether it's the same high school, whether it's uh, the from the same country that you are from, whatever it is. Right. Um, and that's what people connect to. And you got to respect that. Awesome. And play I, to it, you know? I love that, the storytelling. That's absolutely what draws people in. What have you found then? Um, can you see people reacting as you're telling the story of, say, you know, Mock being here as a hometown? Like absolutely. And Lucas User, another great example of someone who's coming back from injury. Did you see the Lucas placard that they had yesterday? No. Where they're walking around, Flat Lucas, they call it. It's just the poster of Lucas there. <laughs> because it's another, he's been a uh, big part of California racing. He's right. had him shot at the big time he's back. And like those kind of stories, the Paul Mocks, the Lucas Users, those stories are something that when you start telling the story, you see people pay attention. You know, and that's where you kind of, it's there's an ebb and a flow with that out there. But that you notice that people tend to work in mass when one one person is like, oh, this is interesting. Other people are like, well, why is he interested or why is she interested? And they, you know, yeah, yeah. So you kind of just need to, to catch that moment. And then someone like, you know, Paul Mock, watch what happens today when we talk to them. Okay, very cool. Yeah. So it's like you're speaking to that one person that you know is going to change it and, Twi and you're speaking to everyone. Well, it's funny, yeah, you know, I learned a long time ago, like, you know, if you go on uh, any of the internet forums, you'll see, you know, there's people that love you and people that hate you, yeah. and there's nothing you can do about it, and, you know, we've talked a lot about it, and I think Phil Liggett gave me maybe the best advice, is you, you've got to play to your strengths and what got you to where you are, and you can't worry about what everyone says, and, you know, like, if, if you do, and you try to change your style to suit them, you end up pleasing nobody, you know, so you really do, I mean, I think in, in that craft of announcing a bike race, go with the, what you feel. And my thing is, you know, try to have a friendly, supportive, encouraging vibe, especially at, you know, USA Cycling National Championships where you've got races at the high end that are crushing it and other races who are maybe really struggling. They deserve a lot of support, I think. Yes. At this level, these guys don't need your support. They're pros. You know, like, yeah. they're cool on support. What they're looking for is a dynamic that's exciting and uh, respected their what they do, their craft of racing, and you know you want you want announcers who get it right, you know, and uh, who give accurate time splits, and who understand who's on the front leading the chase. Because when riders come through, you know, if you're in a breakaway, what really the information that you probably want to know is what's happening right behind me. You can't really look back and see is HTC lining it up, is Fly V lining it up, what's going on? Because you know if it's a mix of riders, you're probably going to stay away, you know. So or, or not. Probably going to stay away, but at least they're not coming full gas. So, uh -huh. anyways, those kind of things certainly uh, make the sport riveting. That's very cool. Well, thank you.